In today's video I'll be painting the new Cavalier Marshal from the Cities of Sigma range. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. This video will have a lot packed into it, so if you want to know why I painted the whole model violet, how I painted hair texture on the horse and two different styles of leather, how I painted the non-metallic steel and gold, as well as some vibrant reds and a lot more, then get into the saddle and come along for the ride. At this point I usually tell you that I primed the model black, maybe applied a zenithal highlight and then started painting, but this time I decided that I would do something slightly different. I always wanted to try out this idea of starting everything from the same shadow color and then ending in the same highlight color, and this model provided the perfect opportunity for that. I liked the original color scheme, but I wanted to modify it slightly to make it a bit darker and moodier. So instead of starting from the black primer, I decided that I would base coat the whole model into shades of violet and purple and use that as my shadow color for all the elements. There was only a slight hiccup. I overestimated the coverage of the violet paint I was using and after multiple coats through the airbrush I realized that I'm just wasting paint and the whole thing is just ending up brown. So I applied a thin layer of white over the whole model and then the violet over that and that did the trick. Finally I wanted to have some warmer and slightly brighter colors on top of the model so I sprayed some purple over it and that turned out exactly as I wanted so objective achieved. And the morale of the story, think before you do and don't try to spray transparent paint over black. And don't be afraid to make some mistakes when you try something new, correcting them is easy but if you never make them you will never learn. So with the violet and purple underpainting done I started the actual painting with the body of the horse. Most of the time it is a good idea to start with the parts that are deeper on the model. If it was a 2D picture this wouldn't be a problem but because I'm working with a 3D model the skin of the horse is actually physically further from me than for example its armor and there are a lot of things on the model that will be in the way if I want to reach it with the brush. So it is better to paint it first to avoid any mistakes later on. I added the same violet that I used for the underpainting into the first color to make it darker and to make the transition smoother and tie everything together. You will see later that I applied the same idea for almost all the elements on the model. I took care not to cover the whole body, I left the original violet intact in the shadows. I wanted to create some texture on the body giving the impression of hair, so I intentionally didn't go for smooth layers but added a lot of individual brush strokes for all the layers. Once I reached a point where I wanted to go higher in brightness than the original color, I started adding ice yellow to the mix. This is another thing that I did for almost all the elements on the model. Instead of selecting multiple highlight colors, I selected one main color and mixed in ice yellow until I reached pure ice yellow. But while I was doing all of this I kept it in mind that I only wanted to create something like a sketch which I would smooth out later on, so I didn't care too much about smoothness and glazes at this point. So I will return to the skin later but for now I was happy with it and I wanted to move on to other things. So I switched my attention to all the leather parts on the model. But because there are quite a few things made out of this material I separated them into two categories similarly to the original key art. For all the bags plus the rider's boots I went with a warm brown color. Leather tends to have a somewhat shiny satin finish so instead of the usual matte colors I use I use Doombull Brown from Citadel because this is one of my favorite Citadel colors and this range has a satin finish out of the pot. I follow the same logic as with the skin of the horse, first adding violet into the mix to achieve a darker base coat and then going up to the pure brown and finally highlighting with ice yellow mixed in. I was paying attention to keep the original violet in the deepest shadows and around the different elements of the bags, like the buckles for example. Keeping it serves as a form of black lining, or in this case violet lining I guess, separating the elements and creating contrast. I made sure to add a lot of scratches on the surface with the highlight colors to give the impression of a somewhat used and weathered leather and of course the usual edge highlights. For the straps that are all over the horse, the backs and the rider, I wanted to do a much more desaturated and more worn leather. So I changed my base color to dark brown and chocolate from AK Interactive. I use these kinda interchangeably mostly because they are so similar and I had them both on the wet palette anyway. I did the same mixing with violet and then with ice yellow method but I did even more scratches than on the backs. These colors are quite matte unlike the citadel brown from before and the end result also ended up a bit too matte and also desaturated in the end. But I knew this would happen so instead of a glaze with the original color I used some thin down sienna ink instead. This tied everything together, darkened the leather down, gave a satin finish and also added a bit of color back into the mix. At this point I felt that I needed to work on the base as well because there was still a lot of purple and violet everywhere and I wanted to see how the environment of the model would look like. But to be honest I also just wanted to work on something easy after the fiddly bits on the backs and the straps. 
First, I took care of all the dirt around the base. I wanted to leave quite a bit of the violet exposed, so I simply overbrushed the mud brown over the raised elements, which is quite similar to dry brushing, but with more paint in the brush. The overbrushing is naturally a bit rough, with obvious separation between the layers, so I watched some rattling grime contrast over it to tie it together and knock back the brightness a bit more as well. I wanted to come back at the end and maybe add more highlights if necessary. For the stones, I did a similar overbrush, making sure that I leave plenty of the violet in the shadows, but to an extent also on the surface of the stones. With the highlight color, I also edge highlighted the stones and made some scratches everywhere breaking up the smooth surfaces. These stones provide most of the environment of the model, so I wanted to make sure they look good enough, but at the same time they should not compete with the rest of the model in terms of highlights. At this stage the model was lacking in bright colors a little bit, so it was time to add the reds, especially the really prominent ones on the cloak and the banner. I started with the brush first to add some texture, but with the intention to smooth it out and make it more vibrant with the airbrush after. Violet is a great shadow color for red, so I paid extra attention to keep it in the shadows, concentrating on painting mostly the raised surfaces and the folds of the cloak and the banner. I could afford to not care about smoothness and even to intentionally create some roughness, because once I was done I came in with some diluted red from the airbrush and simply smoothed everything out. It wasn't entirely done at this point, since later I was planning to differentiate the banner from the cloak a bit, but for now I just wanted to see some colors on the model and understand how it looks together with everything else. And since I already had the airbrush out, I also took care of the inside of the cloak. First I quickly base coated the raised parts with Sahara Yellow and did some very basic wet blending into Ice Yellow with a brush. Finally I smoothed it out with Ice Yellow through the airbrush. Colors close to white can be a pain to paint and smooth out, but with an airbrush it only takes a couple of minutes. And still taking advantage of the airbrush, I decided to finish the skin of the horse as well. If you remember earlier in the video, we left it at a stage where everything was highlighted, but the hair texture and the transitions were a little bit rough. I used very diluted British khaki through the airbrush because I wanted to take advantage of the yellow in that paint to sneak some color into the skin. Due to the extreme dilution I used, the paint was so transparent that it didn't cover up the hair texture that I created, it just altered the color and tied everything together. And the key is the high dilution, something like 20% paint and 80% thinner or water. Very low air pressure and tiny bursts through the airbrush. I do a tiny burst and then use the airflow to dry it quickly and then follow it up with another burst, slowly building up the color. When I was done I also applied some thin down rattling grime contrast as a glaze to the feet of the horse to achieve the color transition that the original had since I quite liked it. And with that we get to my favorite part, the non-metallic metals. These are quite dominant on this model, especially the steel armor on the rider and the horse, so let's start with that. Now this will look a bit crazy at first, but bear with me. Since I already had a nice violet to start from, I decided to transition from violet to blue to grey and end up with white for the armor. I used mostly the original art on the box to identify where the light would hit the model and started to cover those places with dark Prussian blue plus violet. The idea was once again to create some texture, with lots of individual scratches and the scratchy way I applied the highlights, since I wanted to come back with the airbrush later on to smooth some of it out. My main goals were to leave the violet in the shadows and around the edges, make sure that all the transitions between the colors are uneven and scratchy so it will be easier to blend them together later, and to edge highlight everything. By the way, I forgot to press the record button for the stage when I was applying the graphite, so if you see those highlights appearing all of a sudden, that is why, so sorry about that. Speaking of the graphite, that was the first color I used through the airbrush to smooth things out as well. The method here is very similar to what I did on the horse. I diluted the paint a lot and with very low pressure I focused tiny bursts on the transitions between colors, blending them together slowly. And I say slowly, but you can do the entire process in half an hour, including the switching colors and the cleaning in between as well. I repeated the same step with multiple colors from graphite all the way up to ivory, concentrating on smaller and smaller highlights until I was satisfied with the result. This is one of those things that looks very difficult and scary when you see it, but when you try it out it's actually quite fun and easy. Now it's time to put some nice saturated gold on this model as well, because that color is still missing and without that the whole thing looks a little bit bland. The surface area of these gold elements is quite small, so I wanted to do this without an airbrush. And to compensate for that I use more than the usual amount of highlights. The more colors, the smoother the end result will be if I want to avoid glazing. My main concern was to keep the saturation. It is very easy to lose the color from gold non-metallic metal if you start adding colors with white in them too early and cover too much surface with them. So I tried to go as far up in the highlights with saturated yellows as possible, only adding ice yellow in the very end. 
Since most of the elements are trims and smaller objects, it comes down mostly to edge highlighting. First somewhat thicker and then thinner and thinner, focusing the last highlights with the white colors to only a couple of spots where I want the material to shine the most. I used the white to highlight not only the gold, but also added some final bright spots to the steel parts as well in the same workflow. And with that, I was done with most of the major elements of the model, so it was time to do the smaller stuff as well as correct some of the things that I left unfinished. I finally painted the face, and I usually leave this late in the process because this is still my Achilles heel. Here it took me two tries as well. At some point I simply repainted the whole thing and started from scratch. It could be better, but I think it turned out passable in the end. I finished the base as well, first by adding some more highlights to the dirt and then by gluing on some tufts of grass. Finally, I wasn't entirely happy with the red on the banner and I wanted to differentiate it a bit from the cape. So I highlighted it quite roughly with some orangish colors and then smoothed it out with some red and orange contrast paints through the airbrush. And with that, the model was finished and the end result looks like this. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please consider giving it a like and subscribe. See you in the next one.